He'll find a way to get it to you because God is a provider. So the question, the quintessential question for this sermon is, does that provision extend to my relationships? Does that provision include a mate for my soul? And I don't think we can adequately answer that question without accurately understanding a couple of things. And for me, I believe it's important for me to be clear what I mean when I say soulmate. Because when someone in culture says soulmate, they mean, may mean one thing. When I say soulmate, I want you to be clear on what I mean because I am arguing this family that you cannot have an accurate understanding of soulmate without an accurate understanding of a soul. Because we could argue even etymologically that a soulmate is a mate for my soul. So what is my soul? The Bible speaks very specifically and frequently about it. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. In the book of James, James chapter number 1, verse number 21, the Bible says very clearly that we need to put away all filthiness and lay aside the overflow of wickedness. Watch this. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your what? Well, wait a minute. Now, if James is writing to people that are already believers, what does he mean when he says save my soul? If I'm saved, is my soul not saved? What about when Jesus says in Matthew chapter, in Mark chapter number eight, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. For what good is it huh, for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Soul is so significant in Third John chapter number two, John is writing to a group of believers and, and John says something. He says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. He's, he seems to be saying that as my soul goes, so goes my life. Yeah. Family, the soul is the invisible intangible. Invisible, intangible, psychological, and emotional part of our existence that includes my mind, my will, my emotions, my imaginations, and my affections. I'm not just physical, and I'm not just spiritual. I'm psychological, and I'm emotional. I have a mind, which is the organ of thought. I have a will, which is the organ of decision. I have emotions, I have affections, and your affections are what attach you to people emotionally. Did you hear what I just said? That's my soul. So if that is my soul, then Pastor Darius, what is a soulmate? I'm glad you asked me that. They're going to put it on the screens for those of you who want to take note of this. But a soulmate, watch this, is a God-ordained pick. Wait a minute. This is important. Because at some point I have to do a teaching, a series on decision making and the role decision making plays in our destiny. Whom the Lord foreknew, he predestined to be the firstborn of many brothers. So God predestines according to his foreknowledge. So he chooses and seals for me the choice I made. He saw the choices I would make before I made them and he seals those choices. So he can have a preference for me, a will for me, but I need to choose what he's chosen for me in order to experience what he wants for me. And so one of the ways that the devil can detour me on the path, detour me from destiny, is to debilitate me in the area of my decision making. And when you deal with soulmates and relationship selection, it's all about decision making. 
Because it's hard to have a good relationship with a bad pick. Right? Finding a soulmate is about choosing who's been chosen. And good decision making, good decision making begins with having good self-awareness. If I'm not self-aware, I can't make good decisions. Because if I'm not aware, I'm deceived. And there's some, are you hearing me? And when we're growing emotionally and spiritually, we're able to get to a place where we can see areas we need to grow and not feel bad about us. I'm going to tell you when you're really growing is when you look at areas where you need to grow and laugh at yourself. You'd be like, woo, I need some help. I'm woo. That was crazy. I'm a mess. Somebody pray for me. And here it is. At some point, if people are going to change the relationship trajectory of their life, at some point, people have to own, I don't pick good. I said that at some point, you have to be aware. I don't do a good job of picking because I thought that was going to be amazing and that was crazy that wasn't even that wasn't even close to amazing that was terrible that was and then after that one I thought well this is better because I learned my lesson from the last one and then I got with that and I say that's the same thing as that was it was just taller stronger bigger had more money but it's the same Thing. And, and then I went to this one I said I really got this one because God is in this one and I said no, this ain't nothing but the devil I, th I thought it was God it's nothing but the devil we got to be honest and say you know what Jesus I think you should pick next time where are my authentic and honest and self-aware Jesus, next time you just, um, you pick. Wow. Let me tell you why I want your input on my pick. Because it is a God-ordained pick for my life that's suitable for my soul and necessary for my assignment. Suitable for my soul and necessary for my assignment. Because the Bible teaches me as my soul goes, my life follows. Why would God send me someone that puts my soul in jeopardy? Why would he not have input in that area? You mean to tell me one of the most consequential aspects of my existence is my soul and God has no input? When Solomon, the wise man in the Old Testament, tells me to guard my heart without, without diligence, right? Because affection makes you vulnerable. Did you hear what I said? You can't have intimacy and affection without risk. And you need wisdom so that you're making calculated risk. And you're making risk with wisdom and not making risk recklessly. See, because once you get out of college, you too grown to roll the dice with your heart. You see, in college, when you're constantly going through breakups, you can say, I don't feel like going to class. So I'm just sleeping in. But once you get grown and get bills, you know, I don't feel like going to work today because we not right. It's like, wait a minute, but PSC and G and the mortgage and I have insurance and I need gas and my children are hungry. I got to get up and go to work. I am too grown. with too many responsibilities and you have too much work to do to keep being detoured by distractions that come dressed as attractions.